can't believe we're doing this again. Uh, but a uh, couple uh, laundry items, um, and some of you guys have asked me here for the last month. Uh, Brian Steele tried uh, to go. That knee is just not responding. And uh, uh, we're going to make Brian a student assistant coach. And uh, my heart goes out to him. He, uh, uh, you know, for someone that's, that's worked so hard uh, to, to earn a scholarship and, and, and to be such a contributing member of, of uh, the building blocks of our program to, to not be able to play is, you know, it's frustrating. But uh, it's our job to continue to help him, not just uh, through his playing career, but as long as the good Lord allows us all to be on this planet. So uh, uh, our responsibility, he wants to coach for a living. I told him I have no idea why. Uh, but, um, you know, but it's our job to, to help him get there. That's what he wants to do. So we're going to utilize a difficult moment to, to try and help him get ready for uh, life after basketball. Um, and uh, Justin Mackey, at the very end of Monday's practice, uh, almost the last, I think it was either the second to last or the last possession of practice, uh, jumped up to dunk and pulled his hamstring. So when you guys see him out there today, you'll see him on crutches. Uh, that's what's wrong with him. Uh, outside of that, uh, we're healthy and been pretty good in practice. So. Frank, after the first week, does anything stand out to you about this team after you've kind of had them all as a group? Yeah, I don't have to play the guys I get mad at anymore. You know, have got enough people. They don't do their jobs. They just kind of come out, put the next one in. It's, uh, no, it's, that, that, actually, that's true. Uh, but the, the, the thing that stands out is how good our upperclassmen have been. Um, they're, they're out there teaching the freshmen. They're out there talking. They're out there trying to help the next guy. And uh, they understand what they're doing, which then allows me to be more creative to help them as players. Um, I don't have to be worried about effort or their minds or where they belong. Uh, and then they're helping us, the coaches, uh, get the freshmen to understand things better. And that's, that's not surprising, but that stands out. Frank, first I wanted to ask how you guys – did you guys make it through the flood okay? I mean, I know it's that, that area of town. Yeah. Um, it, it, where we're at up there in uh, Wood Creek, that was pretty good. Um, uh, we, we learned after the fact – I actually was on the road recruiting and I got in Sunday night and uh, uh, drove in from Charlotte uh, that night. Uh, but uh, the, the road, Spears Creek, uh, there's, a little wa there's a water reservoir between Spears Creek and Clemson, and that overflowed, and it just took the road out. So Spears Creek is gone. There's a section of it that's just not there. And then the, anyone that's familiar with Wood Creek, when you first go in, then that rushed into the lake that's right in the entrance there, and that overflowed. Um, uh, Coach Fogler's house, Got a little water. That he lives right on that lake. That's how you know. Uh, I'm sure Phil Cornbluth is happy about that. But uh, but unlike many people in town, uh, we were lucky. We we're lucky. And I've lived through a hurricane, Andrew, in '92, a tornado in Manhattan, Kansas, and, and now this flood. And Mother Nature, uh, when Mother Nature roars, uh, you know, we're we, there's nothing we can do. And uh, my heart goes out to, to everyone that was affected by that in a negative way. Frank, I also wanted to ask basketball. You mentioned your upperclassman before. How Sin specifically, since he's had the procedures, how has he come back and responded so far? Yeah, he, he you know, it's uh, the, the thing that's different with, with, with his situation is it's not like a sprained ankle that's let's get the swelling down and let's go. It's not a, a, a dislocation or it's not a torn ligament that, okay, let's go fix it and let's go. It's tendonitis. And 
and you know that can come back at any time. So we we have to um, be careful to a certain extent that we don't overload him too fast. Uh, but he's as healthy as he's been in a long time. He feels good. You can tell by the way he's playing. Uh, he's able. He actually dunked the ball in practice the other day. I was like, "Wow, I ain't seen that since third grade." I, you know, <laughs> it's uh, he's he's got some pop in his legs, and 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 everyone, you know, when I say that, I don't want people to think like, "Okay, well, you got to understand, he's had that inconvenience for a year." So he's trying to regain length, leg strength, but there's no discomfort, which is allowing him to play in better balance. And um, you know, and balance is the name of the game. If you're not in balance, you, it's hard for you to succeed defensively, offensively. It's hard to shoot. It's hard to get by people off the dribble. He was impacted on all of the above. So uh, he's as healthy as he's been in a long time. This summer we were talking about how great the expectations were and how your team was embracing them. But now that practice started, have you gone about trying to manage those expectations, I guess is the right word, or the upper class, you're talking about taking, taking care of that for you? Yeah, you know, Brian, it's – we create our expectations. We don't – I don't, you know – I, I might be one of the few coaches in the country that actually will read stuff and will listen to what's said on the radio. Um, I don't do it a lot. But I do, and if I told you differently, I'd be lying, and I'm not real good at lying. So um, regardless of what anyone writes, uh, I'll tell you what I don't do. I don't pay attention to chat rooms. I, that's irrelevant to me, okay? Uh, but um, regardless of what any expert, and when I mean expert, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm being honest. Somebody that's paid to share their knowledge about what and sh what shouldn't happen or shouldn't happen with our basketball team, what someone's uh, opinion is, um, all that's irrelevant to, to us in our locker room. We create our expectations. We don't want to play for seventh place because they voted us eighth in some poll. That, that, that's all that's irrelevant. And we created those expectations the first time I ever met with the basketball team. Kevin O'Connell, who's sitting back there, he sat in the very first meeting I ever had with the basketball team at, at South Carolina. And all we spoke about was uh, the work ethic that we we're going to create to win an SEC championship. That's what we spoke about that day, and that's what we speak about every day. Um, and, and we continue to challenge ourselves every day to elevate our program to make that reality, regardless of what anyone else thinks or th or has an opinion as to what it should be. Um, I understand some people are going to like how we play. Some people are not going to like how we play. I understand some people think we got a good team, and some people are going to think that we're still not any good. That's what makes the, the world such a great place to live in. It's What matters is is where we're at. And, and I can tell you that uh, I'm as comfortable with our basketball team as I've been since any second that I've been here. And it's because of the growth of the upperclassmen. Those juniors and seniors, uh, they, they, they have gotten to a place where they, they embrace everything. They understand we're older, we're bigger, we're stronger, uh, we're better prepared mentally. Uh, and, uh, and that shows with how they're helping those freshmen out. And, um, you know, the expectation of competing for an SEC championship is never going to. And the day we figure that one out, it's not like we're going to lean back and say, you know, quote Fat Joe, lean back, lean back. It's not like we're going to lean back and say, you know what, we got it. No, now we got to work to go get a second one. You know, it's. Frank, you spoke some over the summer about PJ potentially playing point guard. Has that kind of developed in this first week? And, and what do you what do you like what you see out of him? That's the, his mind. Um, he plays the game like a point guard. That's the way he views it. He plays it and he sees it. And that's where we've practiced him at every time. You know, I think this is practice number six today, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's where he's been at 90% of the time. Um, you know, and uh, his, his defensively and offensively, he's matched up against Marcus Stroman, Dwayne Notice, and Darius Thornwell every play of every practice. That's forcing him to under to deal with guys that that come at you uh, defensively and offensively, which which helps him. 
and uh, he's he's been good. You know, he he's turned it over a little bit too much, but on the contrary, I I ain't worried about the mistakes right now. I'm worried about the improvements and, and excuse ain't. It's uh, uh, but he he's. He, he, he's retaining stuff uh, at an unbelievable rate, and that's, that's a credit to his background, a credit to uh, the preparation that he's had before he got to college uh, by his family and obviously his teachers and, and, and his dad as a coach. Um, uh, he, he's, uh, I don't sit around and, and rave about what guys are going to do because no one knows what's going to happen, but he, he's... He's fun to be around. He's an engaging personality. He's uh, he's all about unity and bringing people together, and, and it's fun to be around that. No play in a de good defense at a college level can be a big transition for freshmen, but how have they kind of progressed in that regard? Yeah. Um, the way we, we structure our practice breakdowns, we, we really don't talk about defense until next Monday. Uh, that's when we start implementing all our defensive concepts. Right now, um, we, are, we do play defense, but we just kind of turn them loose. So I just want to see their ability to, to communicate and be willing to fight and compete defensively um, while we're running our offensive concepts. And uh, uh, they've been pretty good. You know, I, they, they, the freshmen, they, they've, been, they've been good. I, I'm extremely happy with that group. They're... Uh, but the reason they've been pretty good is because our upperclassmen have been so good. They, our upperclassmen have been tremendous in helping those guys, uh, not just the last six days. You know, for the guys that were here in June, June, the other ones that showed up in July, July, and then everybody from August 18th or whatever it was, when they all moved back in, uh, they, upperclassmen have been real good and, and, and enthusiasm and helping and, um, and, and I'll tell you what our upperclassmen are getting ready to learn is the biggest fact in life. The more you help, the more fun it is. And they're learning that helping guys makes it a fun experience. <clears throat> Frank, I guess with your, uh, your Fat Joe reference, you were the one who <laughs> told Spurrier about Lil Boozy a couple weeks ago, huh? You filled him <laughs> in on the whole rap, on uh, that rap thing. No. But, Actually, uh, that was pretty neat when yeah. he when he answered that. That I thought that was pretty neat. I want to ask about to Marcus and his his situation. How's mm -hmm. he doing? Yeah, you know, T T's uh, uh, he's ahead of schedule. Like he wasn't he technically he was not supposed to start jogging to like right now this time period, and uh, he's been cleared uh, for full go since early August. Uh, so he's he's ahead of schedule now. He's he's uh, we've had six practices. He's probably had two of them where where he just was real stiff. And 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 when you take into consideration the the severity of his injury, it's uh, um, it's you know I know I'm thankful that that he's able to be out there playing, let alone doing well. But he's been good. He's got an unbelievable. You know, you hear us say in sports, he's got a motor. Well, he's got a motor. And, uh, uh, you know, he, he's going through freshman stuff right now because he gets lost and he gets he, – he cares so much that he gets frustrated. Uh, but he's been, he's been all right. He's been all right. And it's great, it's great to see him out there competing. And, you know, now him and Sundarius are matched up, and you've got two guys that are just kind of going at each other. Now they're preparing themselves for SEC competition, and that's – uh, that's where we're starting to get to as a program is we have that that competition within our basketball team that prepares us for the kind of players that we're going to play against every time we take the court. And uh, uh, but he, he's he's good. His spirits are good. Um, uh, there's there's some discomfort there. Like if he goes three days in a row, he's going to be stiff. And uh, so we're, we're, we're learning. We're learning how to manage him, how he continues to understand his body moving forward. But he's been, he's been good. Frank PJ is a, a local kid. He's the first McDonald's All-American around here in a long time. Do you worry about people outside the program expecting too much from him too soon? No. You know, that's when you're a good player, 
you know, you, you, you kind of learn how to manage those realities. And, uh, you know, it's my job to help him through those things. It's, it's the job of the people in his life uh, to be there. Uh, that's, that's what happens. Um, that's why I'm so proud of our upperclassmen. You know, everyone's raving, rightfully so, about P.J. coming to school here. Um, but let's not forget, Sindarius Thornwell was a borderline McDonald All-American coming out of high school. Well, Sindarius has been through this for two years. So when P.J. goes through a moment where he doesn't have a good practice or a good game and the 5,000 people that claim to be his friends on here are putting on their, you, you ain't as good as they say you are and all that nonsense, the guy in the locker next to him says, you all right, man. You all right. Don't pay attention to that stuff, man. You know, we look at me. I'm doing okay. Life's good. We're going to be all right. Sindaris never had anyone help him through that, you know. He's but he's learned firsthand. Now, when you have people in your program that that have lived it, it 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 it's our job. That's that's who we are. His structure, his his foundation, our coaches, his coaches, his family, uh, the people that have allowed him to grow and become the individual because he's an unbelievable human being, and the player that he is at such a young age. They're in his life. That's the advantage of staying home. You know, when you stay home for college, you, you, you're not sitting in a dorm room staring at the wall. You've got people around you that can help you manage those moments uh, because those aren't expectations that were created yesterday. He created those expectations. I guess someone ranked him number one eighth grader in the country or something when he was 12 years old. Uh, something like that. I don't know, Pete, you're looking at me. like I, I don't pay attention to that stuff, but someone did that. So he's had to manage that for a while. And the people in his life that helped him manage it to this time, they're still there. And now that's our te his teammates and my job to help him um, uh, go through those things. Uh, you know, PJ, PJ's a very, very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, He doesn't have the answers, and he's all over us as coaches with questions to help him find answers, and those are the people who succeed. It's the ones that show up and they think they got the answers, then no one wants to help them. So when they go through that difficult moment, they're kind of left on their own, figure it out. He, he's the complete opposite. You keep talking about competition and depth, but I want to talk about your front court specifically. Are you comfortable with they are? Are you excited with that area as you've been since you've been here? Yeah, I mean, it's the first time we got more than three guys over there. It's uh, um, um, it's all all three of the the freshman bigs have had uh, real good moments in practice. All three have also had freshman moments in practice, and that's normal. The part that's been fun to watch is, is uh, their willingness to compete. Uh, there's no pouting or rolling of eyes and none of that stuff. And, and that, I think that comes from the fact that those guys got around, you know, Mendogas, Limonis, Mike, those guys, and they saw how hard those guys work in the weight room, how hard they work in any drill that we did in individuals in the summer. And they realize, like, okay, this is how we do things around here, and I better get with the program. And and they've been they've been great, you know. Those it's uh, uh, you know even uh, the walk on Jarrell Holloman, he's you know he's been tremendous in, in his ability to to adapt to how we do things and 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 helping us uh, in in the competitive place in practice. And um, it's as a coach, you know it. it, it it sounds simple and kind of like, like, God, I can't believe you're that kind of cruel. But when you have enough guys, you don't worry about who to play. You know, you worry about who to play when you don't have enough guys because whether they do things right or wrong, you're kind of forced to play them. I tend to not really care about that stuff. I don't, you know, when guys don't do things right, I'm not going to play them because they have to learn. And if that means... Uh, you sacrifice a win in building your program, uh, it is what it is. The young man needs to understand how important it is that they do things right. We're at a place right now where 
if I have to sub somebody, the person I'm subbing out, not for effort because they're tired, but because they don't do things right, don't remember a play, whatever it may be, the person I sub out, better hope the person I puts in doesn't get it right. Because if they do, he might not play again for a week or 10 days or whatever it may be, or not play as much as he was playing before. That's the kind of competition that when you have as a coach, you can have success. Frank, uh, do you look at Sindarius to be the, the leader of this team? Is he the guy that it all has to flow from? Dave, I, I, they got to figure that stuff out, man. You know, it's – I've had guys that people – you know, and I'm never going to say this publicly, but that it, since I've been here that you guys have asked me about, is he your leader? And I'll sit here and say, uh, and he goes in the locker room and no one pays a second of attention to what they got to say. You know, it, it's – uh, you know, that every team's different. Every, every team has new personalities. Every team has personalities that are growing. Is Sindarius in that mix? He should be. He should be, you know. He, he, he's, he's grown up a lot in his two years here. Um, he's a good enough player. Uh, he's bought into our system. He practices hard. Uh, he doesn't come out of practice. Uh, so he's earned credibility inside the locker room. So he should be one of those guys that, that does that. We'll, we'll see. All that, you know, all, all those things, I, I, I don't think those are predetermined from day one. Um, I think those are just jobs that, that they kind of raise their hand and embrace. And, and you, don't, you don't become a leader. <clears throat> you don't become a leader until you're in the fire. We're not in the fire yet. We'll be in the fire in about three weeks. You know, once we get in the fire, then the ones that are raw, raw guys, if they're still trying to do their job and being successful and want to accept being the raw, raw guy, then that'll be it. I, I think he can do it. I, I really think Sindarius had great leadership qualities in him, uh, uh, you know, and uh, he's been through it, and I'm hoping he embraces that. And with that, Frank, he went through a really tough situation this summer. How did you see him respond from that, and, and how is he kind of trying to deal with that as he starts this season? Yeah, he, he's been good. I think his teammates have been good uh, in helping him through it. Um, uh, our, our, our relationship, uh, has all, Sindaris and mine, has, has always been very honest. And, and, and you know, it's uh, – uh, he came to school here because he knew that I was more concerned for him as a human being than a basketball player. And, and when you go through a situation like he went through with his uncle, I think he learns that that's reality. Um, and uh, we, we've all been there for him, and he's been great. Um, uh, his uncle was his rock. That's who kept him out of trouble. That's who taught him to play basketball. Uh, that's who used to take him every day at 5.30 in the morning before school since he was eight, nine years old to a gym to shoot balls, to dribble his left hand. You know, we were sitting around laughing about how his uncle, since he was a little kid, used to tell him, you can't dribble your left hand. And since he's been here, all I tell him is you can't dribble your left hand. And uh, so uh, that it's – he's going to have difficult moments moving forward, you know, when, when, when he looks behind that bench and he don't see – old country sitting back there. Uh, uh, but like I've told him, that spirit country uh, lived his life with that, that he invested into our program and into Sindarius. Well, that spirit's going to continue to live in through him and me. And uh, as we build our program and Sindarius continues to grow up to become the man that, that he's destined to be. Sticking with Sindarius for a second, he, he told me this summer that he kind of set a personal goal to be SEC Player of the Year. Do you think that's attainable, and do you like when a player sets a goal like that? He's good enough. You know, he was one of the five top five freshmen in the league two years ago, voted by the other coaches. So I know he has their respect, you know. Uh, uh, you know, he knows he didn't play well last year. He knows it's not that he played bad, he just didn't play well. Um, and he understands the reasons why, and so do I. 
And our job is to make them the best that they can be. My job is not to break people's dreams. My job is to help young people understand how to get to their dreams and, and, and help them navigate through the difficult times, the good times, and, 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 and try and motivate them best I can so they can achieve what they want. I, if I told you I want him to be player of the year and he didn't want to be player of the year, that's a problem. He wants to be player of the year, and it's my job to help him get there. And, and I'm all for it. And he's a team guy. He, he's about winning. You know, he, he cares about playing within the structure that we put in place. Um, I can tell you that one of the things that attracted me to recruit him was his work ethic and his unwillingness to accept that anyone else is better than him. Uh, I'm not going to change now because he's on our side. It's, it's my job to help him become who he wants to be. You touched on this with, with PJ earlier, but do you feel like him being close to, close to home and, and having that comfort level has, has you know, kind of helped him thrive so early on in, in his career? You talking about PJ? Um, I don't know. His mom's mad at me because she says she hasn't seen him but maybe twice since he reported for school. So, you know, Miss T's not real happy with me right now. She's like thought she can see her baby every day. So we keep him kind of busy over here. But uh, um, it, it's there's something to be said when you're so busy that even though you're 20 minutes away from your house like he is, you don't have time to go home. But at the same time, when you feel like sleeping in the bed that you slept in for the last 20 years or 18 years, whatever it is, you can go home and do that on a Friday night. Have mom cook you dinner, have mom do your laundry, and sleep in that bed, and then be back where you belong Saturday. You know, there's something, something to be said about that. And, and uh, uh, I know Strowman loves it, you know. When the floods happen, you know what Marcus did? He went home and slept with his family. You know, he, he didn't, even though campus was fine and he went to his house and he, he was with his family when the, you know, after the floods. And uh, there's something to be said about the structure, the people that have helped you become who you are when you're 18, uh, continuing to be a part of your life. And, uh, and as PJ go, because he's not going to be great. He's going to have difficult days. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. It's everyone, you're exposed to it. If he didn't want to be go through a difficult day, then he wouldn't play basketball. He'd go do something else where no one pays attention to what you do and no one talks about it. But this is what he's chosen to do. So when he goes through a difficult day, the structure in his life is in place where he can go touch it, see it, feel it uh, at, any, at any moment, at any time, which um, when, when you're confused, when you're uncomfortable, you don't lean on people you've never seen. You lean on the people that you trust. And that allows him to do that. So as, as we move forward, I think he's going to be in a place where uh, uh, that structure that's helped him get to where he's at, plus his new family that we, and we, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about family. We work real hard at creating a family. We care about each other. We learn each other's families' names. We. We do things together. Those guys enjoy being around each other. Um, you combine both entities, and it's going to help him. So, you know, staying home for him, I think, was the right decision. With his compatriots in Canada, you know, he's kind of lost in the shuffle a little bit coming in when he's getting recruited, and then he's been here, maybe sometimes gets lost in the shuffle as well. But all Dwayne's done is kind of performed every time he's had the opportunity. How, how much has he impressed you as he's come come along, and what does he mean to this basketball team? Oh, Dwayne's tremendous. Dwayne, Dwayne's, Dwayne's a rock. I mean, uh, the latter part of his freshman year, I thought he started playing real well. Um, his work ethic, his his camaraderie, uh, his uh, his belief in us. You know, in our program and our coaches and his teammates uh, carried him into his sophomore year. And, uh, you know, he, he, he had a great early part of the season last year. You know, and then he didn't play as well in the month of January. But then you look at us at the end of the year and, 
you know, we dealt with all the nonsense we had to deal with. And once again, without an upperclassman to help him, he tried to figure it out and did. And by the end of the year, he was playing his tail off again. And we became a pretty good basketball team. And, and he shot the three close to 40%. You know, I think it was 38.7 or something like that, uh, which is pretty good for a sophomore. And uh, uh, so he, he's a rock, and he guards, he plays. Uh, I'm hoping that with more people around him, uh, he doesn't have to carry as big a burden from how many different things he has to do. Uh, so, so, so he can, so the game can be simpler, so he can be more efficient in, in how he's playing it. But, uh, yeah, Dwayne's a rock. Dwayne, Dwayne's, you tell me where I got to go, I'm more than happy to take Dwayne with me. Appreciate it.